Your heart, one of the most important organs in your body. All of your arteries run through it, and by pumping your blood, it keeps you alive. Today we're going to talk about vitamin K, and how vitamin K2 can help you have both strong bones and a healthy heart. So let's get started with strong bones. As you probably already know, calcium makes up a lot of your bones. It's really important for them. Your bones aren't just some stationary object in your body, but they're dynamic living tissue. In fact, at any given time, 10% of your bones are under construction, taking calcium in, sending it out, and all that kind of things. 99% of the calcium that is in your body is in your bones. So then it leads us to the question, where's the other 1%? Well, that 1% is all throughout your body and primarily in your bloodstream. See, calcium is really important for things like regulating your heartbeat and combating inflammation. Your body sends calcium to wherever it's needed throughout the body through the bloodstream. But I thought we were talking about vitamin K. Well, vitamin K is really important. See, it's essential for not dying. Without vitamin K1, you could potentially die from a nosebleed. Because K is a key ingredient in the coagulation of blood, or blood clotting. But then what about K2? Isn't that what we're talking about? Well, yeah. So let's draw our bone again. And we've got calcium in our bone and we've got calcium in our bloodstream. Well, how does it get back and forth? It can't do it by itself. And so what K2 does is it activates a protein called osteocalcin, which helps the calcium get into our hard uh, bone instead of staying in our arteries, where it could do damage. See, how it does damage is it can embed itself in the soft tissue. So K2 also activates another protein, which sweeps the calcium out of the arteries. And that protein is called matrix GLA. Essentially what this does is it prevents calcified arteries. And you don't want that. That leads to things like strokes, kidney stones, and all kinds of complications. See, calcium is good, but it needs to be controlled. So you could say vitamin K2 gives calcium legs. Vitamin K1 and K2 are not the same thing. Definitely not. Research done in the 1930s by a dentist by the name of Dr. Price is very interesting. See, he figured that dental decay is not normal, that our body should be able to fix the teeth by itself. So he took a plane around the world to go to Aboriginal cultures where they had healthy teeth and relatively disease-free lives. And through his research and lots of photographs, he figured out that something he called Activator X was common in all their diets. This is amazing because once he isolated this Activator X in their diet, he went home to his client clinic and found foods were rich, rich in this Activator X and started treating his patients by changing their diet instead of filling cavities. And it worked. We had no idea what this Activator X was until 2007 when researchers finally concluded it was vitamin K2. So, K2 not only sweeps our arteries, but it builds our bones. And research going back 70 or 80 years to prove this. What about food with vitamin K then? Well, it's food that you probably didn't like as a kid. Things like broccoli, spinach, kale, parsley. Things your parents told you you had to eat. Well, that food is rich in vitamin K1. Now, we do convert some of our vitamin K1 to K2, but best case scenario, only about 6%. Foods which are rich in vitamin K2? Well, Dr. Price found it was grass-fed cow's buttermilk. They had to be grass-fed. Today, we've also found another food rich in vitamin K2, and that's a Japanese food by the name of natto. Natto contains MHK-7 vitamin K2, which is probably the best kind of vitamin K2 you can get, and it's loaded with this stuff. Problem with it is natto is kind of slimy and stinky, and even a lot of Japanese people don't like it. 
but despite not liking it, many people in Japan still eat it every day with their rice. Why? Well, it's because the studies have shown that health benefits of, benefits of vitamin K2, specifically in natto, are really good. So most of the foods rich in vitamin K are actually rich in vitamin K1. And our body won't convert vitamin K1 to vitamin K2 unless we have an abundance of it because of K1's importance. So because of that, most people today are, are deficient in vitamin K2. And finally, one more point. If you supplement with vitamin K2, try to take it with vitamin D3 as well. These two vitamins offer a one-two punch to keep your bones healthy. So that's all we have to say for vitamin K2. It keeps your heart healthy, it keeps your bones strong. <laughs>